I got a phone call from my manager and he's like, yeah, your bus burned down. And I was laughing. I was like, that's hilarious, man. And he was like, no, I'm not like I'm being serious. It's like it burned to the ground. What do you think happens when a shy, insecure kid blows up and becomes one of the most famous comedians on YouTube and is forced to reckon with the thoughts and judgment of millions of people? I'm Anthony Padilla, and I spent today with Curtis Connor to find out. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. And if you wanna watch this episode completely ad-free and uncensored because there are some naughty words, click the join button down below to become a member. Anyway. Hello, Curtis. Hello, Anthony. Curtis Connor. You can just say Curtis. There's more names. You have four names, right? I do have four names. It's Curtis Matthew Kenneth Connor. It's like my parents couldn't decide on one, so like, let's give them a lot of them. It sounds like they were naming four of their children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to be four kids, and then I combined into one. Did you like destroy or eat the other ones? Or yeah, it's like when you consume a fetus in the womb, but I was right. after. Except it's cannibalism. Yeah. Well, um, if you want to call it that. Mm you know, tomato, tomato. I, I feel like I need to say something. Okay. Um, I feel I need to say thank you. This is, um, you have no idea. Okay, <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need to, <laughs> I need to thank you. This is a story, okay? okay? Okay, you have a story for me? Yeah, so back, this was back in like 2007, maybe 2006. My school was having a, a Halloween costume contest. This was like right after Transformers rap came out. On the Smosh, Smosh video? On Sm the Smosh Holy video. Holy shit, no one references that video. That's a rare- That was like my favorite Smosh video was the Transformers rap. Holy shit. And you guys had like the the cardboard helmets. Yes. So me and my friend Brayden, shout out Brayden, we like copied those and we just like had them. We were like, we're Transformers for Halloween. This is our idea. <laughs> and then oh. we won the costume contest. Oh, congratulations. So Plagiarism they, always wins. Yeah. It's a big moment in a young young man's life to win a Halloween costume contest and I couldn't have done it without you. It's so. like a coming of age. So thank you. I Damn. appreciate it. Many funny people developed or honed in on their sense of humor in dark times in their life where they felt like having a sense of humor about the dark things is actually what kind of helped them survive those moments. Yeah. But you actually had a bit in one of your stand-up routines that I saw where you said that you had no struggles in your childhood. You yeah. said that your only struggle was trying to get your N64 cartridge to work without blowing in it. That is an old bit that I, mm. that I did, wow. Mm. But zero struggles. Perfect was, life? I mean, not perfect, <laughs> but it was like pretty easy, I think. I was like, I, my parents like divorced when I was like three. I think it's probably because I consumed all those babies uh, after mm. I was born. Mm -hmm. That's a good reason for divorce. Yeah, it's pretty traumatic. <laughs> you keep him. He has all four of the <laughs> yeah. names. It was never really like hard because it's like that's what my life was. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just like used to it. And I also had my stepdad who was like there like my whole life pretty much. So it was like mm -hmm. I had a dad. I had a father figure like at home who was mm -hmm. like funny and like kind and patient and like really like nurturing. I was like pretty much the only <laughs> like hardship was like, oh, I gotta go see a guy every other weekend. And like <laughs> play and, and play, yeah, it buys me stuff. I get to play N64 there. Yeah, my life sucks, dude. Your stepdad introduced you to computers. <laughs> yeah, uh, he said, this is computer. <laughs> my stepdad came home one day with like two separate desktop computers. One for my sister Kylie and then one for me. How old were you? Uh, I was like, seven or eight or something. There, there is nothing cooler in the world, especially in the early 2000s, yeah. than having your own personal computer as a child. Straight up, yeah. Unlimited access to everything yeah. on the internet. And I- All you gotta do is think of it and you can find, there was zero filters. Yeah, and the I The Wild West. I would play like, I play The Sims all the time, yeah. Roller Coaster Tycoon. You remember like old internet browsers, like Internet Explorer, when mm -hmm. it's like you could like download some thing that would give you like a special looking like cursor. Oh yeah. I would have like in 50 of those, probably like so many viruses on it for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I was like, my cursor is a skateboard now. And then of course, like there was like the older kids on my street who would come over and just like Google the, the craziest shit. Is that where you were first exposed to how fucked up the internet could be? It's crazy like when you see that as a child, mm -hmm. like graphic things, mm -hmm. it doesn't like register in your head that it's like a real thing kind of. And then like later in your life and it's like not, it's burned in it's your brain. It's still there. Yeah, I'm never forgetting that. No, no, I, I definitely saw things when I was a kid that I wish I could unsee now because I thought at the time that it was like, oh, I see it for a moment and it's done, but it's literally burned in your head. Yeah, well, I'm talking about the, the Fred videos. Fred, yeah. 
I can't forget that. Never, <laughs> Man. never forget, unfortunately. <laughs> Shut up, Fred. I'm just kidding. I love those videos. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, you were exposed to unfiltered shit when yeah. you were young. Violent stuff, boobies. Boobs.com. Kitties.ca, the boobs. Canadian com. one. And then it says, what about them? So you've been there, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I looked at all the nationalities of boobs. You're a, a man of the people. A connoisseur. A connoisseur. And you started consuming YouTube in the early days of YouTube as well. I was like a diehard like Smosh fan, obviously, yeah. What do you um, mean, obviously? Well, I mean, as a kid growing up. <laughs> to me, in my head, I li just lived in my own little bubble. Mm -hmm. I saw numbers on the screen getting bigger, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm just making stuff. I didn't... True. It was very difficult for me to ever imagine that there were actually people watching this and that they weren't just numbers. True. I was like, obviously, I... Well, sorry, I won't say obviously anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I watched Smosh like all the... Time. Like I had like so all the songs on like my iPod Shuffle and stuff. Like I was <laughs> so like sick. I was a diehard fan. I think the first time I heard about YouTube was from the Pokemon video. That's so weird to put in perspective. Yeah, because it was like my one of my neighbors, the same neighbor who showed me all the boobies and stuff. Oh yeah. Um, he's like, you like those? <laughs> You're gonna love. This. You like boobs? Have you heard <laughs> about these two guys? <laughs> yeah, these two boobs over here. <laughs> now you have almost four and a half million subscribers on YouTube. You have a podcast, you do stand-up comedy tours. Stand-up is front and center, and it's kind of always been front and center of what you do. Most people mm -hmm. would never even go towards stand-up at all. To me, even that, that sounds more horrifying than anything that I've ever done is doing stand-up. Really? What made you face your fears and do something that most people could never do? I wanted so bad to just have an, an outlet where I could just like have like an honest like reaction, I guess, from people. Mm -hmm. It was weird how I actually started it. It was like my, I worked, I was working at Starbucks at the time. A barista? I was a barista. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You make a mean um, latte? It's pretty mean. Yeah. It's pretty angry. Okay. It's pretty fucked up, actually. Like, that, like yeah, pretty offensive lattes oh. I make. Yeah. I had this regular who came in all the time. And like I would just like joke around with him. He was like a cool guy, mm -hmm. and he was like, "You're really, you're really funny. You, you should, you should try stand up one day." And in my head, I was like, "That's a thing you could just do." I was watching like Eddie Murphy when I was a kid and stuff, like doing like stand up, and like that's Eddie Murphy, you know? Yeah, that's Donkey. You have to be Eddie Murphy or Donkey before you do <laughs> yeah. stand up. Yeah. So I was like, I can't just do that. But then he's like kept like, like you know, just like encouraging me, like you got to do it, you got to do it. Like, you better. Stand <laughs> yeah. <up>. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not paying for this <laughs> copy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Fine. I went there and I did a like a five minute set and it was not good. It was really bad. Like booing? Not that bad. It uh, was like, I think I got like one like little chuckle. Oh, uh, like a... <laughs> yeah, that, pretty much that. <laughs> but that was like enough for me to be like, I guess I'll do this for the rest of my life. I'm trying to remember what the joke was. I got the one laugh. Are you going to perform it right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So picture me. I'm like 19. Okay. No mustache. No, no mustache, mullet. No mustache. No mullet. No tattoos. No tattoos. Scrawny as ever? Scrawny okay. as ever. No nothing. Okay. Well, I had clothes on. Oh. But... <laughs> That's a very different image than what it was. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So Quentin Tarantino, he's making a, he's making a, a documentary about orange juice. <laughs> is yeah. that the part where you're no. supposed to laugh? No, hold Because that's pretty good. Hold on, he's making okay. a documentary about orange juice and he's calling it Pulp Nonfiction. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> it's so bad, but I can't help. <laughs> yeah. I, I laughed and I was, I think that there was a part of me trying to suppress the laughter because I feel like I shouldn't. Right. And a little tear came out. Yeah, that, I think that was the response that, that I got to. Yeah. Was that one guy laughed and he was like, I looked and he was crying. <laughs> <also>. <laughs> and then you've made comedy your life, your career. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, it's crazy. I would do shows whenever I could. And it was right when like Vine came out. It was like low stakes, I think. It was just like mm. an easy thing to just start. I miss that a lot now because YouTube so much work. Were you but devastated when Vine <laughs> shut down? I was, yeah. I was like seriously like scared because I was like, I worked so much. And dude, it was like that year. Like I remember I was at like, in my head, I was like at this like crossroads. I was like, I could either like, cause everyone else was starting to do YouTube and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I could start doing that or I, or I could just like really focus on Vine and like just do that. And mm -hmm. I think it's gonna go, I think it's gonna be the next thing. Did you put all your effort into and Vine? I sure did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put all my eggs in that basket. 
And then they were like, yeah, we're actually taking this basket away. We're actually going to stomp on it. Do you remember where you were when you found out that Vine was shutting down? I was at like a serving job that I was doing. What were you serving? Looks. Oh, yeah? Damn. Look at that. Curtis I got fired. <laughs> you got fired? <laughs> no, I'm from... <laughs> <laughs> My phone was like blown up for everybody and like, what are you going to do? And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what am I going to do about what? Like, it seems so dramatic looking back at it now. <laughs> so I was like pretty scared. I was like just at work. And I was like, okay, I got to finish my shift and then uh, process this, I guess. And then that sort of pushed it back a little bit. And then I ended up getting a full-time job um, mm. at Inkbox. That's when I started like really focusing more on YouTube in my spare time. And then, uh, thank God, it, I had like one video take off like overnight. Had like, I went to bed, I had like 2,000 views and I woke up, I had like 600,000. Holy shit. Yeah, I think it was just a good thumbnail because the thumbnail had like a, a boobs? it was like, yeah, can, <laughs> Canadian boobs. <laughs> that, was, that was the old Smosh way. So yeah. I, I thought maybe you picked up on that. Right, yeah. no, I, I should have. Yeah. <laughs> Once that happened, I was like, video every week, which were, is crazy. I don't know how I did that. Video every week while working. While working full time. And then I think it got to a point where I was like, I have to, just quit and see where this is gonna go. Thinking back, I shouldn't have quit when I did. Why? Because I didn't have like that much like money put aside. Did you ever get to a point where you were like, oh shit, that might have been a bad choice? Luckily, not really. Yeah. Cause like it was pretty, it like took off pretty quick. And then like the Danny and Drew tour happened. Like they brought me out on tour mm. to like open for them. Do you yeah. think that kind of solidified your place in the YouTube space? I think so. I already looked up to them so much, like as like creators. Yeah. Um, they're also like my good friends, but like I just like admire them so much and what they do. Um, so it's like to have them, I guess, like co-sign what I was doing. I guess mm. was like a nice thing. Be like, okay, this is, this is gonna be all right. How did that happen? I mean, with like the Vine invasion of YouTube. Whatever. Literally, literally, Matt Pat calls that the Viner invasion era. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was like a whole era of YouTube. Yeah, it was. It was. It has its own era. I think it's the third out of five eras so far. Oh wow! Yes. Damn. So you were part of that. Yeah, I feel mm. okay. Cool. So you like ruined it. YouTube. I mean, what? No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. A lot of people said that the Viner invasion ruined YouTube at the time. Yeah, I mean, there were some that did. There were some some ruiners. Jake Paul. Not to say any names. No, I didn't say anything. that. Sorry, Logan Paul. That's <laughs> that's what you meant. You, oh, I still hate you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Clip that. <laughs> yeah, damn it. That's the next boxing match. Mm. They'll kill me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kill me. Oh, yeah. Knock my mustache right he off. He would box you to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's like Viner Sewer doing stuff that I thought was very funny, like like Cody and Noel, yeah. uh, Danny, Drew, and stuff. Um, so, and that was like the commentary genre. So once I saw that they were doing that, I was like, I gotta, maybe I'll try that. Were you tempted at that time when you started doing the commentary stuff to go down uh, a more mean-spirited route? Because it was very trendy at the time to be like, this yeah. is so cringy. The, you know, cringe mm -hmm. TikToks, cr everything was about like how cringy people were. I've never been the person to be like, to like punch down. I've never wanted my content to be like that. I feel like there were some points where I was like, towing the line a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or I was like, looking back now, I'm like, I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to go that hard. Because I saw that one of your earliest commentary videos were about furries. Yeah. And that, that was one of my first videos of the series. Yeah. Actually, that's where the sloth came from because I came out with that outfit on as oh, a, wow. you know, my first Sony. <laughs> and um, I didn't necessarily go into that video with like uh, mean intentions, but it was still a little bit of like, these people are weird, right? I think that was my furry video too. My yeah. first one, it was like, I think I was still poking fun a little bit. Mm-hmm. But actually sitting down and like doing the research and like learning about it, it's like, it's a different, it's a whole different world. When I first did that video about furries, it's like, I didn't research anything. I was like, no. I just searched furry cringe compilation. And I was like, this is, is kind of weird. <laughs> cringe compilations were all, you know, they were <laughs> yeah. the thing yeah, that was the to thing. do at the time. Yeah. And then I had the furries come in. Some of them flew in. So when I they flew in, like, were they like bird furries or? Yeah. They, they. <laughs> flew into the coop and... Yeah, my arms are tired. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were just random people that had no idea who I was or anything. I was like, well, mm -hmm. the point is to, to be like, this is kind of weird, right? Yeah. But learning more about them and where they came from, why they wore a fursuit, why they felt more comfortable portraying a character with mm -hmm. a fursona. It gave me so much perspective of just the humanity that's 
that lays that that lies within all of us. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it, especially with the, like earlier commentary reaction type stuff, or I guess commentary, there was like the whole like leafy type person who would mm. be like, "This is this person sucks," and you're yeah. like, "I don't even. This is like bad. Like, I don't even. I feel bad watching this." Idubs did that as well. Oh, right? As well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The other mustache uh, mullet man. Yeah, the, other, the other guy. <laughs> So I think it was like, I never wanted to be that because it's like, it's so, it was such a gross form of content. I made a video about Disney adults like last year. Well, like, like huge Disney fans? Yeah, adults. Like, like adults like that are just like, I go to the park every week. Like I, mm. I'm obsessed with Disney. I think what I said in the video was like, I don't want to just make fun about, I just want to, I don't want to make fun of Disney adults. I want to learn about them mm. and then make fun of them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but with the knowledge, yeah. with the effort first. Right, so it's yeah. not like I have the knowledge to be like, I know what I can make fun of. Right. And not to be like, these guys are f***ing losers. It's like, I, yeah. the only thing I was like making fun of was like the absurdity to be like, you know, older, like in your 30s or 40s and be like, I'm a, I'm a little baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like some people live on the Disney property too. It's like. You can live there? Yeah, it's called Golden Oaks. I'm teaching you a lot about it. <laughs> this is all the things you've learned. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's called Golden Oaks. There's like really, really like multi-million dollar houses on Disney property and it's like they're Disney themed. You, you should do one about Disney adults, that'd be cool. If you've never done spend one. A day, I spent a day with Disney adults? Yeah. Okay. That'd be cool. I gotta get people that live on the property. Yeah, yeah, That's, fly them out. Yeah. yeah. You could have taken the route of just kind of shitting on these people with all the things that you've been told about them, but you yeah. took a different approach right yeah and i guess that's also like the other th the part of just like getting older <laughs> it's just like you're like mm. thinking critically more about what you're doing the point where i'm at now it's like that was the thing like early on youtube i feel like you kind of could get away with like punching down because it's like you there's only like you're already down here <laughs> so it's like yeah. so it's like you're al almost always punching up in a, in a sense when you're starting up if i like now especially i feel like i have way more responsibility mm. with like having such a a large audience and like young, young people watch me too. It's like, like Spider Man. I'm like Spider Man. Yeah, great. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought you meant like strong or like oh, no. smart. Mm -mm. Okay. Like nah. witty. Mm -hmm. Just, just the just responsibility power. part. Just power. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. If I'm just like posting some, a bunch of like mean shit and i'm just like making fun of someone it's like it's not a good look for me mm. it's not gonna do good for people who are watching it mm. um you know I, i've always just wanted my videos to be like just funny mm -hmm. and like entertaining and maybe a little, if it can be informative and like inclusive you know i'm just trying my you know i just try my best <laughs> to make you mm. know i don't want to make anyone upset with the things that i do do you think about that going into creating your content like this is going to have an impact so maybe I should make it more this way or anything like that? Yeah, I think there's some jokes that I've written, even when I'm like just editing and I think they're fine up until that point and they just like totally are like, this is kind of like too far. This is like kind of fucked up that mm -hmm. I said. Not like saying crazy shit, but you know, just like it doesn't fit in like what I'm trying to do. There's like still a bunch of times where people are like, that was, you probably shouldn't have said that joke. So people will point um, it out? Yeah, and it's never like, I never take it as like a, you, that was fun. like you're an idiot. It's like I always try to take it as like, gotcha. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Right. Because I feel like even if the things I have done that have been like called out, I feel like they haven't been like that gnarly. And you know, I can't go without thanking Dipsy for sponsoring this episode. Dipsy is an app full of short audio stories designed by women for women. Isn't that right, women? So what they do is they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters and new content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories, you can always find something new to explore. Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they also offer written stories. So you're set no matter how you like to consume these delectable little morsels. And for I spend today with viewers and listeners of the podcast, Dipsy's offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Padilla. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash P-A-D-I-L-L-A. Now back to the world of Curtis Connor. I do have to say, very nice mustache, sir. Oh, wow, yes. thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Do you that. hear that a lot? I do, but it still feels nice to come from, you know, in person. But when I started it, that was not what I heard. This took a long time for me to hear that compliment. <laughs> Cause when I first started growing it, every tweet yes. that I got, 
was uh why do you have a piece of shit on your lip or something you look ugly it's like it was really mean now it's compliments i'm on the other side now does the audience ever sway the way that you feel about yourself or the decisions that you make sometimes in terms of like physical appearance i feel like they just unlock new ways to like hate yourself you know? right which is really cool. We all need a humble reminder that we shouldn't be perfectly happy and confident with ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I did the the mustache and the mullet, I was like, I feel like the best, you know, most authentic version of myself ever. Like, I feel like I look awesome. And like, yeah. at the first, <laughs> first point, like a lot of people were like, not mirroring that. It's like, whatever, you know? It's like, maybe if I was going through this when I was like, like 17 or 18 or something, mm. I'd be like way more like affected. But I'm like, I'm almost 30. It'd be kind of like weird. If I was like, these teens are upset with me and my mustache. So it's like, I'm at the point where it's like, I think I know who I am now. I think yeah. I know like what I'm about, what I stand for, what I want to do, you know, how I want to portray myself. Well, it really takes perspective though, because when you're younger, it's easy to think that, you know, if someone's saying something about you, you should actually listen to it because their words might even be more valuable than your friends who might just be trying to have your back and not say the real things that people are thinking. True. It's actually for a very long time, for like over 10 years, I would read comments and be like, okay, if one person says it, then there must be so many other people thinking be. it and feeling it. I gotta be self-aware mm. and I have to take this to heart, whatever it is. There is stuff that I've read that it's like about my content and what I do and mm. it's like genuinely good criticism. And I'm like, okay, great. Like, thank you. That's awesome. Mm. But then it's another comment. It's like, not funny, stupid. Mm -hmm. Stinky, you stink like shit. And it's like, how? You can't even smell me. You know? They can tell though. <laughs> yeah, they can They're just... like, you look like someone that smells yeah. atrocious. Which honestly, that's fair. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I do understand. But I don't, right? No. Right? Okay. I can confirm. Zero, <laughs> zero cent. How many tattoos are you up to now? I think I'm a, probably like 30 or 40. The last one I got was my uh, tour logo. Um, that one. Damn. Yeah. You know you love your tour when you got your tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like everybody yeah. on the tour got it. It was like a yeah. bonding thing. The guy who tattooed it put white ink in it. Can you even see the white ink? No, that's the thing, because I'm, you see me, I'm very white. You are very I'm white, a white man. man. <laughs> so you can see it like this part. You see where it's like, like chipped kind of? It looks a little like it was irritated at one time. Yeah, because oh my God, it was. It hurt a lot, like way more than any tattoo I've got. Like, and I, maybe he just had a heavy hand, but then the next day, I um, I think I got infected or I had like a crazy allergic reaction to the white ink. Yeah. Because my lymph nodes in my armpits swelled up. Oh shit. So it was like, I couldn't put my arms down. Oh Because it hurt so much. <laughs> And I had to do like shows. I was on tour because it was the oh, tour logo. Oh shit. And I had to do shows with my arms pretty much like up the whole time. God, I'm like having flashbacks. Like thinking about, <laughs> yeah. thinking about how it You're felt. like starting to sweat. I know, dude. It's like, I was, cause I, I didn't know what it was at first. They were like, my lymph nodes were swollen, but I thought yeah. they were like a pimple or something. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake City was where it was at its like absolute worst. So if anyone at the Salt Lake City show is wondering why I was like that for the whole show, that is why. Oh, oh the, what the fuck happened? Maybe you must have put in like mayonnaise or something. I don't know what it was. It does look kind of like mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very white ink thing to, you know, to be like, I'm gonna go in there and I'm not gonna ask permission. I'm just gonna, you know, very that's white. That's such a white ink thing. That's a do. white ink just behavior. Like take, just take, take it. Yeah, not even ask. Mm -mm. Yeah. No consent. Yeah. It's f***ed up, dude. But, I mean, tattoos are cool, <laughs> usually. Yeah. I'm actually kind of itching to get a, oh, I'm itching here, but I'm itching, <laughs> I'm also itching to get a, a new one. Was that your first tattoo? Yeah, well, I had, I went in for one session and it was like 30% of this. Okay, And damn. then I went in, I loved it so much, two and a half months later, I, I went in and got a shit ton wow. more. I only have like small ones, cause I feel like this is like a, a Easy, like a lesser form of commitment than like a larger yeah. one, you know what I mean? Well, I had done so much research and I wanted, I've been wanting tattoos for so long, but having something recognizable on me that someone could immediately be like, that's what that is, right. or or something that I felt like maybe I might not really be as into if it was like an image. I just felt like I could never commit. But when I found something that felt more like expression, mm -hmm. felt more like it emoted a feeling, I felt like, I could easily commit to that because it was a representation of who I was at the time. And right. especially because, you know, I don't talk about what my tattoos mean much because it is so personal, but yeah. 
it represented a shift in my mindset that I had and being able to commit to something and know that there was a before and after that yeah. I was about to commit to mm -hmm. it was actually really empowering to feel like I can I can commit to a new version of me. Wow. And Damn. you said that too, like one, you said that you kind of feel like there's, it's like you, you become a new version of you after you get a tattoo because it is permanent. Yeah, it is cool to look back on like pictures of like, if I only had like one or two and it's like, oh yeah, that was, that was me at that time, I guess, yeah. you know, I didn't have this, had this happened to me that made me want to get that mm -hmm. tattoo, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a visual reminder of the progression that you've made in life. Mm -hmm. I don't even notice that I have them anymore because it's like, yeah. they're, they're just like- It's just you, it's just yeah, part of you. Yeah, but. I got some stupid ones though, so I feel like- You have like... four arms on your forearm. I do, yeah. I got that, I got a, I got a dabbing skeleton right here. I actually really like the idea of a tattoo not being too serious though. I have one that says like, yee yee on it. It's from like a country video I did like years ago. Yeah. And it was like, if I this tweet gets this amount of likes, I'll get yee yee tattooed on my leg. Don't lie, you just wanted to do it on your I was gonna do it regardless, <laughs> but <laughs> I lied. The tour bus caught on fire. Mm-hmm and you tweeted, tour bus caught on fire, lost a bunch of stuff, oh well. Yeah. <laughs> like you were able to keep a sense of humor about that? I had no choice. I was yeah. like, uh, yeah, dude, rough go on that tour, eh? Whiting, the tour bus, bus burning down. Fire. It was good because we weren't on the bus when it happened. We were on a, like a five day break. So I was back, we we're all back home in Toronto. And then morning of, I'm supposed to fly to South Carolina to like for the show. I thought my flight was at like 6 p.m. Yeah. But that was my connecting flight. So oh, my shit. actual flight was like at like one or two and it was like, it was like 10 a.m. So I was like, I haven't packed yet. I need to like, mm. I need to like, so I was already stressed. And I was like, I ran home and then uh, I got a phone call from my manager and he's like, yeah, your bus burned down. And I was like, you're like, what? And That's I was laughing. I was like, That's hilarious, <laughs> man. What? Why would you do that? I'm like really busy. Yeah. Like, cough. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was like, No, I'm not like I'm being serious. It's like it's burned, burned to the ground. And I wasn't about to like cancel the shows because I'm like, yeah. I can, we still do the shows. Like, I don't need the, I get like, obviously still going to do them. It was so crazy too because like on Twitter when I posted that, everyone was like, Is this a joke? Are you joking? I don't, can't tell if this is a joke or not. And it's like, What? What's the joke? What's funny about that? It kind of seemed like a joke because you said, you're like- Oh, oh. I think I was like, oh, fire isn't gonna stop me or something. Yeah. Like, some along those lines or yeah. something. So maybe I should have been more, maybe it was my fault. <laughs> what is it about doing what you do that brings you the most joy? Oh, I said the money, man. The money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just being love, rich? Just so much money. Just being rich enough to have a tour bus burn down and <laughs> really not care that you lost <laughs> your, your Evanescent shirt. <laughs> I think I just, ever since I started doing comedy, uh, I, it's just been so rewarding for myself and just making people laugh. Um, it's just something I've, I've always, I, I, it's something I've never thought I'd be able to do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that I do get to make what I want to make and do what I want to do with like no, like no one telling me like what I'm not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. It's like any, creative person's like dream, right? So yeah. it's like, I'm so grateful for where I am and the like fan base that I do have because they're so funny and so cool. It's just a dream come true. So I, it's, it's, um, yeah, very thankful and, and very happy to be, be where I'm at for mm -hmm. sure. I feel like we're good. Is there anything that you want us to remove or cut out? No, I think remove? whatever, I think it'll be funny. Okay. Even the stuff that I did say that was pretty gnarly. I think yeah, it's silly. even the f***ed up stuff? Yeah, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. We'll make sure that's the only stuff that makes sense. So it seems <laughs> yeah. like that's all you do is like, talk. Like I'm a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, eating babies and cursing yeah. Jake Paul. Yeah, I'm gonna start the intro by being like, today I'm sitting down with a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, no. He doesn't know. <laughs> he is a psychopath. Damn it. You like Photoshop me to look like the Joker too? Yeah. Green hair. Oh, I don't, I don't want to bring associations with interviewing the Joker because I know what the Joker did when the Joker was interviewed on a show. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't want to die. Yeah, true. What I'm trying to say. Forgot about that. Yeah, I don't want to be brutally murdered in front of. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. Okay, maybe. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs>